As we know, transitioning to civilian life can be challenging. We see how undervalued they are and how they're often forgotten about after having served. That's why we aim to give them new purpose in life. And once word of our astronaut training program makes it through the grapevine, we'll have thousands of veterans and civilians alike lining up to train for free with nothing but the chance of becoming an astronaut as incentive. Sure, they'll need to sign a contract, but I don't see lack of compensation being an issue. These folks will literally show up just for an opportunity to participate in our astronaut training program. While NASA astronauts only make approximately $125,000 per year, we aim to pay our astronauts a salary of $250,000 to $500,000 per year, which I feel is only fair considering the scope of their work. However, they'll only be paid their salary once our PMC has established a contract with the Department of Defense. Each of our astronauts will be a rifleman to protect national security interests. Space Marines, if you will. I'm looking for Navy SEALs and Green Berets to help lead and train our technical engineers who've never operated in an austere environment. Our training program will be similar to Naval Special Warfare training by integrating certain components such as surf training, log carrying, and beach runs. I want to push our astronauts to their limits during training so they're prepared to handle whatever comes at them while on mission. The remainder of the training program will be based on NASA's astronaut training program, with heavy emphasis on simulating lunar operations. We intend to use our artificial superintelligence, Mother, for deep learning data analytics to monitor the health of our astronauts, satellites, and infrastructure in real time, reporting on any abnormalities. Mother will monitor vitals such as brain activity, pupil movement, heart rate, breathing, and speech patterns. This data will be used to establish a baseline during training. If we notice an astronaut deviating from baseline while on mission, they'll be pulled immediately, as we don't intend to take any risks with our crew. Mother will also utilize a large language model and natural language processing to provide immediate answers to any questions our astronauts may have while on mission. Because even seconds matter when operating in an austere environment such as the lunar surface. We're going to need space suits for our astronauts, and we intend to buy them from either Axiom or Collins when the time comes. We plan to start with one operational group of 25 astronauts, which we've broken down into two platoons of 12 with one alternate. The alternate will be ready to step in in the event that an astronaut cannot make the mission or is unfit for duty. I feel it's important that the alternate have experience working with both platoons as these guys are going to be very tight-knit and know exactly what makes each other tick. Ideally, we'd like to rent NASA's neutral buoyancy lab for the EVA training component of our program. However, in the future, we may construct our own EVA training pool if demand at NASA's neutral buoyancy lab increases. At that point, we plan to rent our EVA training pool to anyone who's interested as a way to generate revenue. We also plan to use our first base station as a training facility, not only for our astronauts, but we intend to rent it to NASA, ESA, SpaceX, Axiom, Blue Origin, Analog Astronauts, and whoever else is interested in training on the platform that they'll be visiting on the lunar surface. We see this as an excellent way to generate additional revenue. Initially, most of our revenue will come from government contracts, as we intend to operate as a private military contractor for the DOD, NASA, UN, NATO, and ESA. The initial six-month contract will be for two manned lunar base stations, one for NASA and one for ESA. Each operational group will launch as two platoons on separate SpaceX starships, carrying 12 Meraki astronauts, embeds, and supplies to land on the lunar surface and occupy our base stations under contract, after which the base stations will be turned over to NASA and ESA respectively. Then we'll land a third base station to serve as a base of operations for Meraki Space Systems to begin constructing our agriculture domes. Once the agriculture domes are complete, 
we plan to begin construction of the first lunar space hotel for space tourism and then tune our sights to one percenters for lunar settlement construction. We plan to utilize a robotic humanoid support crew to assist our astronauts while on mission. We see them making up approximately 25% of our astronaut core. They'll perform tasks such as carrying, lifting, holding, fastening, connecting, etc. The prefer proverbial workhorses of our astronaut core, if you will.